Hello, and welcome to Heaven on Earth. My name is Sherelle. How's everyone doing today? What's that? I can't hear you. Now that's more like it. I've come to prime and pump, as they say. Um, that's kind of like my job to get you ready for Heaven on Earth. So to do that, we're gonna play a little game. And the game is called Smash the Hamburger. Who doesn't love a hamburger, right? So who's playing Smash the Hamburger today? Let me see if I can find any fine young helpers or volunteers. So here we have Terrell and TJ, and they're gonna be our volunteer helpers to smash the hamburger. So now that we know who's playing, let's find out what you're playing. This month, we've been talking about getting off stage, dropping the act, and showing integrity. So these boys are actually going to do what everyone does when they go to Five Guys, and that smash the hamburgers. Are you guys ready for that? Yes. Okay, perfect. So each one of these boys will take turns spinning around, and then they're gonna try and smash the hamburger. That's, that might be a little bit difficult, but it'll be fun too. The one who finally gets rid of their hamburger gets to decide which campus will win a beautiful prize for the campus, right? Yes. Are you guys ready? But of course, we need them both to be blindfolded. Boys, both blindfold yourself, please. And we're gonna spin them around and they're gonna smash the hamburger. The game is over when whichever one of these boys literally gets rid of their hamburger and smashes the burger. So let's do it, let's play the game. done way to smash the burger let's give it up for both of our smashers so tj you're the winner way to go did you decide which campus will receive the treat of course which campus i decided the downtown campus downtown campus you're gonna get all the treats yay so are you guys ready to get started yes, yes. no 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 i didn't hear you guys are you ready to get started yes then here we go! Hey everyone, it's great to see your faces again on this final session of Heaven on Earth. Over the past two days, we've been learning all about integrity. Integrity means that you drop the act. You stop pretending to be someone you're not. And you choose to live your life honest and truthful in every way, as you follow God with your words and your actions. Oops, I almost forgot I was still wearing this. Anyways, why don't we all stand up and get ready to celebrate as we get into worship. Come on! Awesome, it's so good to see you guys here. We're going to do the Chatterbox one last time for our Saturday morning. It's going to be so good. All right, Christian, you ready for it? I think I've mastered it. All right, here we go. Okay. Mm, how about green? All right, G-R-E... Ooh, E-N. <laughs> what about, about a number? Four. One, two, three, four. Last number? Hmm, this is a big one. I'm not quite sure. Eight. Eight. The biggest. All right, let's see what you got. What is it? Lift your hands. What? Prayer awesome. Hands. So if you used your chatterbox, <laughs> use whatever praise that you found as we sing this next song. Let's do it. Thank you. 
upon you for a thousand generations and your children and their children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you yeah, come on in the morning in the morning in the evening and you're coming you're coming and you're going and you're weeping you're weeping and rejoicing he is for you 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 for you. He is for you. Yeah. Sing on man. Amen. 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 It was so good, guys. It was so much fun worshiping with you on our last day of conference. Stick around. Breaking news. Just in. We got brains everywhere. And now to the professor at the Cornerstone Kids Science Lab. Oh, hello, boys and girls. Welcome to the Cornerstone Lab. Professor Meyer is here to help you. We're going to be talking about a couple things. One is the human brain. Oh my goodness. I'm so excited about this because everybody has a brain. God has given us not one, not two, yes, three lobes to the brain. That's why we're going to be talking about this today. So, again, welcome to the lab, Cornerstone Kids Science Lab, where we like to play with a little bit of science. So by the way, I got my calculator molecular there, and we're gonna be talking about a lot of things. One, I'm gonna be showing you my little friend called the brain. I got the pineapple because sometimes people think that they have pineapples in their brains. Well, that's not true. They got the brains in the brains, and we're gonna be talking about these things. See, God is so wonderful because when we were born, our brain, 2% of our body weight. That's right, it's three pounds. Three pound brain in your head when you were born. And by the time you are three years old, everybody say three, one, two, three. Well, guess what? Your brain is 80% the size that it's gonna be. That's why, and I'll show you my friend, we call him Spiggy, Spiggy the brain. That's right, he's my little helper today. See Spiggy? That's what my brain, that's what your brain looks like with all those things inside of your head. Well, that's your brain right there. That's what it looks like. I'll put him back later. But Spiggy, well, he's 80% the weight that he needs to be at three years old. Now, the brain, believe it or not, this is why you have to listen to your parents because it's not fully developed until you are 25 years old. That's right. 25 years old. God has created us to follow your parents and listen to all your teachers in the happy Sunday school because your brain is not fully developed to when? 25 years old. That's right. So you got to listen to your parents, listen to everybody because they know a lot more than you do, right? I love science. Science is wonderful. Okay. 
So let's talk about the brain a little bit. By the way, you know, we're going to be talking about a couple of things. One is like teaching the dog new tricks. Okay, everybody has, anybody have a dog? Raise their hand. That's right. Dogs. Woof, I love dogs. But teaching them new tricks, you see, that's how your brain starts to develop. You see, that's how babies go get leg, leg to talking. That's right. They start moving their arms, they start playing, they start doing things because there are things that are happening in their brain. Right when they start and they are born, they then start to develop their brains. And those little things are called neural pathways. Everybody say it together. What? Neural pathways. Oh, you guys are awesome. For that, I give you a little bit of, that's right. That makes everybody happy. So. When we talk about neural pathways that are happening inside your brain, watch this video. So those learned behaviors, right? Ooh, hot, cold, just go this way, do this, whatever it is, those neural pathways are creating new like roads. And when those roads you have created, well, guess what? It becomes easier to do. By the way, anybody ever ride a bike? I love riding bikes. Woo! Let's give it up for bikes because bikes, well, you have to learn to ride a bike. When you get on a bike, you create neural pathways that create those movements. And it gets easier and easier to ride a bike. When you are playing sports like soccer or baseball, you're creating neural pathways, you see? Now, there are a couple of things. God has done some amazing, amazing, amazing scientific things for us. Because Spiggy, now everybody look at Spiggy, right? Spiggy is always learning. He's learning how to do math. He's learning how to talk properly. He's learning how to play sports. He's learning how to play the violin. But sometimes we learn not so good things, right? We learn to be negative. Sometimes we hear negative. Well, their neural pathways are also creating negativity. And sometimes that negativity, well, it costs us a little bit. Because those neural pathways, it becomes easier and easier to be negative. To yell at your brothers, to yell at your sisters, your parents, not do what you're supposed to do. And that's not what God wants us to learn. God wants us to be powerful. He wants us to learn great things. Watch this video. All right, so we're talking about the neural pathways. And that's why God has created us to be something of a positive force on this earth. That's why we have to use our brain properly and create those neural pathways properly. Matter of fact, he gave us a great verse in Philippians 4.8. It says, finally, my brothers and sisters, always think about what is true. Think about what is noble. Think about, think about what is right and pure. Think about what is loving and worthy of respect. If anything is excellent, worthy of praise, think about those things all the time. You see, it's easy to yell at your sister. It's easier when neural pathways, and you're always doing that neural pathways have created that path. Let's break that and think about positive things. How about telling your brothers and sisters how awesome they are and how great Jesus is to them and how loving that he is, that you are. Because the more that you do that, those neural pathways you see, start to create easier paths for you to think and say those things. Remember, you control a lot what comes out of your mouth, you see. That's why Jesus loves you so much that he gave you a brain that does all these things that starts creating pathways of power, might, love. And your little brain is still developing, but it's always creating what? Neural pathways. Thank you for joining us today. We love you. Enjoy the rest of this time, the rest of this video. And we're going to talk to you guys real soon. Love you guys. Back.
crazy professor. And now back to your regular program. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Heaven on Earth. My name is Ken and I'm Steve. We're excited to see all of you today. Anybody here for the first time? Yay. Glad you could join us. Uh, Steve, that is the saddest welcome I have ever seen. I can do better. Great. Hello. We are thrilled you decided to come today. I hope you're ecstatic to be here. I think they would be more ecstatic to have their appendix removed than that introduction. What is wrong with you? E even though this is not the first time you've worn a mask. Why are you wearing a mask? It's my mask of shame. Okay. Why? I am no longer funny. That bone that used to be there is gone. It either dissolved, was removed, or maybe it was never there in the first place. I could have survived just on my good looks alone. Right, um, what are you talking about? I told you I'm not funny. Why would you say that? Well, on my way today, I told a joke to a person that was holding the door. And? They didn't laugh. Oh, well, maybe the joke wasn't funny. It happens to me sometimes. That's my point, Ken. You're not supposed to be funny. Me, on the other hand, that's what I do. It's my job. It's why people talk to me. I'm the funny guy. Well, you are funny. You just told a joke that wasn't funny. It's okay. Happens to the best comedians. Every one of them bomb every now and then. Really? Yes. And that's not the only reason people talk to you. You're kind of special. I mean, people love you. You're helpful when you want to be. I think you're focusing on the wrong things here. Let's bring... You bring so much more to the table than just being funny. Like salad? See, that was supposed to be funny. Well, you can do better than that. Listen, if being funny is that important to you, I have an idea. What if you tell us a joke and if we laugh, you have to promise to take off the mask? Okay, I guess so. What's a skeleton's favorite musical instrument? What? The trombone. <laughs> now see, that was funny. Maybe not your funniest. Definitely funny. Okay. Guess a promise is a promise. Oh my goodness. Come on. The shame is deep, Ken. The shame is deep. You know what? Sometimes we tell ourselves lies so often and for so long that it's hard to accept the truth. Let's try again. Tell us another joke. All right, um, ooh, where does a ghost like to travel on vacation? I don't know, where? The Dead Sea. Oh, no. <laughs> now, that was funny. Well, thank you. All right, then, off with the mask. You got it. Okay, you have a problem. I know. But this is helping. Uh, let me do one more. No more masks? This is the last one, promise. All right, let's have it. All right, what do you get when you divide the circumference of a jack-o'-lantern by its diameter? No clue why. Pumpkin pie. Oh. <laughs> I even tried not to laugh at that one, but you know what? That joke right there, that is you. Quirky, funny, extremely random. That's right. I'm not just funny. You're not. I have nothing to be ashamed of. Nothing? Now take that mask off. I will. Oh my goodness, what happened to your face? Uh, I ran into the door the person was holding when I told the joke. Oh, you are completely ridiculous. Here, put these on. Thank you. Oh, oh, 
I really feel better now. Well, let me introduce today's special guest speaker. It is Pastor Ricardo Miller. Take it home from here, Pastor. Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pastor Ricardo, and I am so delighted to be able to share with you uh, during this year's Heaven on Earth Conference. This year is a little bit different. You must know and must agree with me that, that it is different, right? It is so different to the point where we're no longer worshiping in the confinement of the church building for this year's conference. It's a virtual conference, and I'm so glad to be able to share with you. Over the years, I've had the privilege of, of having those great time of ministry with you guys, but tonight, I want to continue that with a message that I believe that's going to help you to grow strong in faith. I I think you're growing and every week and every month and every year, guess what? Your goal is to get better in Christ. Okay? Your goal is to get better in Christ. So I want you to say to what me, I'm getting better. Come on. I want you to say to what me, I'm getting better. Woo! Come on, come on. I want you to say it with me. I'm getting better. Now, here's the deal. Here's the deal. If you're a girl, if you're a boy, no matter how old you are, I want you to know you can get better. Okay? Now, this year's conference, we're focusing on integrity. We're talking about truth. We're talking about always focusing on what is truth. And I believe that as we grow, it's important for us to develop a truthful lifestyle or a truthful mindset that will help us to be so much more like what God is desiring for us to be. I want us to turn our Bibles tonight to Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Listen to what it says. It reads, boys and girls, finally, brothers and sisters, always think about what is truth. Think about what is noble, right, and pure. Think about what is lovely and worthy of respect. If anything is excellent or worthy of praise, think on these kinds of things. I think it's important, boys and girls, for us to realize that as we're growing, Watch this. As we're growing, I want everybody to say, I'm growing. Come on, let's everybody say that with me. I'm growing. I want you to start building a mindset where your mind is focusing on what is truth. The Bible says whatsoever things are truth. What you want to do is you want to learn to focus on truth. As you focus on truth, you're going to grow understanding and appreciating the value that comes from living a life of truth. And the word of God says focus on what is truth. The Bible tells us about a story in 2 Kings chapter 5. It talks about a prophet named Elijah. Elijah was a man of God that listened to God. He gave instructions and God would follow through on whatever Elijah would say. There was a man also in the same region that his name was Naaman. Okay, Naaman had a problem. What was Naaman's problem? He had leprosy. He had sores all over his body. He had a problem. Naaman had a problem, but watch this. There was a prophet in the area that heard from God. But Naaman felt as though this problem was not going to go away, and his servant said to him, Naaman, what I can do for you is I can help you by taking you to a prophet, a man of God that can help you. Watch this, boys and girls. Get rid of this problem. Now, Naaman felt as though, you know, uh, I got a problem. How shall I deal with this problem? Well, there's a prophet. There's a man who can help you with this problem, Naaman. And his servant says, you know what? Let's go see this man. The Bible says that Naaman went about to see Elijah, but Elijah, when Naaman came to his house, never came outside. He never came to meet Naaman. But watch this. When Naaman got the instruction, which was, Elijah said, go to the Jordan and I want you to dip. I want you to dip seven times. And the Bible tells us that Naaman was not pleased. He was not pleased as a matter of fact. He was offended. He was upset. He was mad. Why was he mad? Because the Jordan was nasty. It was dirty. It was disgusting. It was like yucky, 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 yucky. Ooh, think about that, boys and girls. Think about it because here's the deal. You got a problem. Your skin is, 
oh, has all these sores and all of this stuff that's all on it. And now this prophet is telling you to go and dip in this dirty water. Okay, but I like what Naaman did. After being persuaded by his servant, Naaman went ahead and he dipped. That's a good thing. Naaman went ahead and dipped and he got up out of the water and guess what? His body was whole. His body was like baby skin. It was soft and it had no more sores on it. It was nice. Okay, and Naaman now was happy. He was so happy because guess what? He no longer had leprosy. So he wanted to go and see Elijah. Oh, I'm going to see Elijah. I'm going to see Elijah. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Now here's the deal. When he got to Elijah, he was celebrating and he says, Elijah, I have to bless you. I have to give you some stuff. I just got to say thank you through giving you some camels. I can give you some horses. I can give you some donkeys. I can, I can give you some stuff. But I like what Elijah said. Elijah says, no. Praise God that you are no longer sick, but I can't take your gift. He wasn't going to receive a gift from Naaman because God did not release it for him to receive the gift. So he decided, ah. I'm going to decline your gift. I'm not going to take your gift, okay? I'm not going to take your gift. Please, you can just go. I'm glad you are healed. I'm glad you're whole. I'm glad you're no longer dealing with the problem you had. Praise God. Well, Naaman decided to leave with all of his servants because he had a lot of servants. He was a very influential man, okay? He showed up with an entourage. He had people on the right and people on the left. But watch this. He got healed and now it's time to go home and he was leaving and Elijah had a servant called Gieza. Gieza ran down Naaman. Gieza ran down Naaman and he says, hey, stop for a moment. I need to tell you something. There are some prophets in the area and my master has instructed for you to give me these things so that I can give it to these other prophets. Okay, Gieza told a lie, boys and girls. It was never an instruction given to him from Elijah. As a matter of fact, Naaman says, no problem, here are the stuff. Because Naaman was so glad that he was no longer dealing with leprosy. And watch this, Gieza got back home, he stashed the stuff. He stashed the stuff and he went about his business. He went about his business. He went about his business. And as Elijah showed up, Elijah said, Gaza, where have you been? And he says, well, I've just been around. And he says, well, you're telling me that, but I saw what you did. He saw what he did in the spirit. God revealed to him what he had done. And he says, the leprosy that was on Naaman is going to be now on you because you decided to not be truthful. You have positioned yourself to live a cursed life for the rest of your life. The decision you and I make on a daily basis, boys and girls have to be truthful. Okay, you and I, we have to focus on what is true. Gieza knew that was not the instruction that Elijah had given. As a matter of fact, Elijah said, I don't want anything. Boys and girls, they're going, there's going to come a time in your life where you're going to have to tell yourself, I'm going to focus on what is truth. I'm going to focus on what is true. Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are of good report, that's what I'm going to focus on. Now, here's what I know. What you focus on grows. You see, Gieza kept focusing on the fact that there was wealth being walked away carried away by Naaman and all of his servants. And Elijah would have been a man that was living a very simple life. And Gieza thought, I can get some of this wealth if I would just tell a lie. Never tell a lie. Always tell the truth. Build your life on the truth. Tell yourself, listen, I'm going to do what is true because in the long run, the truth will always pay off. Boys and girls, whenever you tell a lie, it will work against you. Whenever you start practicing doing things you ought not do, it's going to hurt your future. You want to practice developing a lifestyle that when you learn the truth, that's what you do.
When I learn the truth, that's what I am going to do. What am I going to do? I'm going to focus on what is true. Okay? I want you to say that with me. I'm going to focus on what is true. Now, here's what I know. When you pray, you can ask God, God, help me to focus on what is true. Your scripture says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, it pushes me to believe that I should always be focusing on what is true. But sometimes it's hard. And I know it's hard because guess what? I can remember being a boy growing up in the Bahamas where it was hard for me. I have a son and I can remember times where I've had to help him to understand it's more beneficial to you to speak the truth. Focus on the truth, boys and girls. God has an incredible plan for your life. If you focus on the truth, I promise you the reward that's going to come back to you is going to come back to you in good measure. It's going to come back to you running over. It's going to come back to you in a way that you're going to be able to say, I'm so glad that I've always focused on the truth. As I kept growing, I'm becoming a stronger believer. Today, I want to pray for those of you that are watching me and knowing that God has a plan for you and you got to now focus on becoming a person of integrity. You got to start focusing on fo focusing on the fact that what your mindset centers itself around is what you're going to become more known for. And so I want you to focus on what is true. Father, I thank you for the boys and girls that are watching this. I thank you that you're helping them to develop a lifestyle of speaking the truth, thinking about the truth, walking in the truth. Father, bless each and every one of them. And during this conference time, may they reflect on every part of the service that reminds them that as they grow, there are right things they should do and there are wrong things that they ought not do. And what you focus on becomes the greater part of your life. And so may they focus on what is truth. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Hey kids, we have had a great time these past two days and I'm actually going to be sad that heaven on earth is coming to a close. But before we end, I wanna show you something. If you make your way closer to the screen, you will see I have a floating balloon. In front of me is this balloon filled with helium. Notice how when I tug on the string, you can tell it is floating freely. Great. This balloon represents our lives without guilt of sin to weigh us down. They could keep us from floating to the heights that we aim for in life. And this balloon is at its highest point. It is lie and guilt free, but today, I wanna show you how lies have the potential to weigh us down when we choose to live our lives without integrity. Now lies that are going, the lies that are going to be represented in weighing this balloon down will come in the form of silly string. Watch as I cover my balloon with silly string and weigh the balloon down. Ready? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> look at that balloon. It's definitely heavier and lost a lot of its color and shine. But guess what? This activity is far from over because like Gehazi learned in our Bible story, trying to cover up our lies and keep them hidden is really, really hard. Trying to make it look like nothing is different to the people you've lied to is really difficult. So now I'm going to do the best I can at getting this balloon to look as normal as possible by removing every bit of silly string from this balloon with this toothbrush. I wonder if this is gonna make a bigger mess. I'm doubting it's possible. Do you kids wanna see? Let's go. Let's try to get rid of those lies. Hmm. Wow, see, telling lies, then trying to cover them up makes a big old mess. And trying to clean them up is even bigger of a mess. So remember, focus on what's true. You're good enough, you're smart enough, and doggone it, people like you. Steve, what are you doing? Oh, I'm talking my dog on this new app. 
Yeah, you see, he's been having trouble uh, potty training. Sure. So I was just calling him to encourage him. Look at that. I didn't know they had an app for that. Oh, hey. Well, there we go. Thank you, sir. No well, we, problem. We better wrap things up here. Sure enough. Well, um, I just wanted to say thank you for joining us for Heaven on Earth. We've had a great time. We have. Together these last three days. It's been wonderful. Thank you so much. Hey, let's review that definition of integrity one more time before we go. Integrity is being truthful in everything you say and do. We want to thank you for joining us, yes? It's been awesome. You guys have been fantastic, and we'll see you next time. Absolutely. Bye. I really do understand myself better now, and I appreciate who I really am. And because of that, I want to give that freedom to someone else. I think it's time to play a game. This game is pretty simple, and you can play along with us from home. In just a moment, some of your conference hosts are going to come out here and dance. That's right, they're going to shake what their mama gave them. Yeah, all right. All you have to do is guess which host is which. Sounds simple? Of course not, they're all masked up. How are you going to know who is who? So you really have to make the right selection. You have to know who is who on the inside. You need to focus on what really matters. You need to look through the mask and identify each host. All right, fight, I mean dance. Start the music. That was something else. You know, it's kind of like Heaven on Earth's masked singer. All right, host, you can take a breath. But while you're at it, why don't you take your masks off? What? Even hey. I didn't know who they were. You guys What's did a on? great job. It was so fun having you here at Heaven on Earth. We're going to see you next time. You have a great day. Bye. 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 All right, kids, we sure hope that you have enjoyed yourself at this year's Heaven on Earth Conference. Today's craft is rather simple. It's an integrity frame to hang on your bathroom or your bedroom mirror just to remind yourself every day to be the real you. All you need to do is cut out the center of the square outlined in black and leave an opening so that you can see yourself through it. Tape the frame to any mirror and peel back the sticker so that it will stick. And if you don't have the adhesive kind, then you are welcome to just tape it to the mirror. Once you've done that, read the words that you cut out from the center. For example, look at yourself through the integrity frame and say, I can be truthful with my whole life, or I am getting better. I can focus on what's true. God made me special because he loves me very much. Thanks kids for joining us and we sure hope you have a great rest of 2020. God bless you.